Hello, I'm Amanda, also known as Shutter Monkey, and welcome to my vlog, Crafting with Shutter Monkey. Online, you can find me on Ravelry as Shutter Monkey Designs. I'm on Etsy, I have a little shop on there. I'm Shutter Monkey Designs on there too. Um, you can also find me on Instagram, I'm We Shutter Monkey, and I also have a, an Instagram page, Shutter Monkey Designs. Don't use that one quite so often as I should. And I'm also, I also have a Facebook page, Shutter Monkey Designs as well. I've got quite a few things that I want to show you today. I've got some knitting stuff, some crochet stuff and some patchwork and quilting. I'm going to try putting little timestamps down the bottom. Um, if you're not interested in one of these sections, you can just skip forward to the next bit. Okay, right, here we go. I'm going to start with the, the knitting section. On Ravelry, I have four free shawl patterns, one of them is the old shale shawl that I've got here. Um, it's quite a popular knitting pattern, there's quite a few people have knitted it already and you don't have to knit the big size for yourself. You could knit a little one for your toys. This one was made using double knitting, this one was made using iron. You can knit it in any size of yarn you like, you just scale down your needles to match but this one's quite cute. This is a wee mouse by Cool Crafting and she's got a wee She's got a wee dress on and her welly boots too. But watch how I hold her, you don't want to see right up her dress, do you? But that's one of my free shawl patterns. There's another, there's another three on there as I've already said. And over the last few months I've spent quite a bit of time designing and knitting socks that match my, my four free shawl patterns because obviously that's what you need. You need socks that match your shawls, don't you? So the first socks that I designed were the old shield socks. So that's them here. And then I did, these are actually helter skelter. These were, I had scoosh in mind when I started knitting these, but then I found an easier, an easier scoosh sock. So these ones are renamed to helter skelter. And then I've got my stripey one, my stripey ones, they go with the stripey shawl and that's got a Gaelic name and I'm unsure how you pronounce it. So I'm not even going to try, I'll put the name over here, okay? And then we have Fanko to go with the Fanko the Fanko show. I'm going to I'm going to show you the old shell ones in a wee bit more detail because these are, this is the first pattern that I'm hoping to release. But before I release the pattern, I'm hoping I can get some test knitters to knit this for me. Be really kind if you could. My email address is Amanda at shuttermonkeydesigns.com and. Or you could contact me through Ravelry or through Instagram as well. That's the two places, not really through Facebook because I'm not on there a lot. I tend to go weeks before I, weeks go by before I check that. But I'm looking for some test knitters to knit this for me. And that would be great if you could get in touch with me and do that for me. That would be great. I'll show you. I've got some other old shoe ones that I've been knitting as well. These ones I knitted for my daughter during lockdown. And I knitted these ones for myself. So we know whose we know whose socks is whose because Chloe's is that where the purple means starts with red, so we'll not get them mixed up. Or we could even have one of each and have odd socks, couldn't we? I know some people some people don't like odd socks, but we don't mind. So that's the old shield. I should probably tell you a wee bit more about the yarn that I used for these. I'll just get it. This is this is a wee bag that I made. This is where my, all my, my rainbow yarns in here. When I, when, when I started designing these knitting patterns, um, they're all going to be free patterns. They won't, they won't be paid for patterns. They're free, they'll be free knitting patterns when I get around to releasing them. And I was looking for a budget yarn, so they were, it was cheap and cheerful to knit them. It's not going to break the bank. And when I looked for budget yarn, it was Drops, Drops Fable that I found. So I've knitted all, all these socks that I've just shown you, they've, they've been knitted in Drops Fable. Apart from the stripey one, there's a wee bit of Drops Delight in that to give you the, the coloured stripe. But when, when I'm about to release that pattern, I'll give you some more details about that. I don't want to overwhelm you today. But these, the Drops Fable, it was really good as well because if you've got to buy seven different balls of yarn, it's got, it gets quite pricey. So this is relatively cheap. And I've knitted, I'm on my third pair of socks like this and I've still got loads left. Can that dozens of socks for Christmas? Can everybody can get rainbow socks? 
I'm just going to put this bag down. So looking for test knitters for this one, I'm hoping to, if, if I release this as a free pattern, it'll just be the medium size that I release as a pattern, but I will give you guidelines on how to do the larger size on the 72 stitches or the smaller size, 56 stitches, but the patterns when I release them as a free pattern, they will just be medium size, 64 stitches. I'm also hoping to show you how to adapt them into shorty socks. So these are a wee shorty pair that I've just popped onto the needles yesterday actually. I'm not really sure how well you'll see this, but I can show you these next time. I'm going to come back in a couple of weeks and I can show you better. But this is this purple one is a colour by Mothy and the Squid. And this multicoloured one is by Vicky Brown Designs, the colourways Ursula. And the reason I picked the Ursula colourway is because it's old shale. It's water on the beach and waves, the way pattern of waves on the beach. So I just thought Ursula was quite a nice yarn to use for that one. When I come to doing the second sock, I'm not quite sure what to do because I've got I've got another skein of the Ursula yarn, but I was thinking I could do it in Ariel. So I've got an Ursula and a little mermaid sock. Oh, you can maybe let me let me know what you think about that. Odd socks rather than matching. Okay. Just pick up my yarn that I dropped in the floor. Right. Other socks. I've got some other socks to show you as well. I showed you already the Helter Skelter ones that were originally going to be Skoosh. But then I decided these ones, these ones here. These are, I, this is a Regia yarn. And these are going to have an afterthought heel put in. So these are really, really easy to knit. They really are a pure Skoosh to knit. And I've got them cuffed down. And I've also got started up here that are toe up, so they're they're just a bit they're just the same opposite way around. But I'll put the afterthought heel in later on. Just ignore my stitch markers are now they're just for me. I'll explain those later on when I go into more detail about the squish sock in another episode. Okay. And the other the last one. Oh no, I've got I've got one in there. I'll show you that. I'll show you that next time. I've got this one as well. This is just a wee cotton sock, um, and it's got the. What's the name? Oh, forget me not. Imagine me forgetting the name of that. Uh, this is my this is a forget me not shawl that I released. So this is um the forget me not pattern just on a little cotton sock just for wearing to bed. Maybe if you have to moisturise your feet and get your wee cotton socks on. And the last pair of shock socks that I've got to show you are these ones here. It was my birthday birthday earlier on this month, and this yarn's by a Canadian yarn dyer. These ones are on the sock blockers, but I've not actually blocked them yet. Um, they've still to be soaked. We just popped them on here. The colours are lovely, aren't they? I'm lovely. This is a Canadian yarn dyer. She's um, the cosy knitter, and the there was it's my birthday. There's the colourway, so that's why I knitted those in August. So just to need to get these blocked before the end of the month, and then I can wear them. Right, I think that's all the knitting I've got to show you, so I'm going to move on to crochet, okay? I'm just going to clear up first, get all this out of the way, and I'll bring this in, and I'll bring you in. When I get round to releasing the sock patterns, I would actually like to run some knit-alongs, some sock knit-alongs. So it's maybe something you can keep in mind for Christmas coming up. I'll get the details for Old Shale put onto Ravelry sometime this week. So if you do want to buy the yarn and you've got it there and you're, you'll have it ready to knit when I, as soon as I get the pattern released. But it's two balls of the, the Drops Fable and it's a pale grey colourway. I'll just, I can tell you actually the name. It's colourway number 115. For anybody that's interested, this is what I've got left over. But I've been using this to do my to knit the heels of the rainbow ones as well. This grey shade. But I'll get more details put onto Ravelry, and if anybody's interested and wants to buy yarn to knit the socks when the pattern comes out, you can get prepared. Okay, right. Crochet. Earlier on this month, I released a, a crochet pattern. It's the first pattern that I've published on Ravelry in a few years. But it was for this. It's for the my granny square. Oop, can you see that? Oop, yep. Sorry. 
um, the granny square cushion. This is the front and this is the back. And there isn't buttonholes on it, I've just used the, the holes in the granny, the granny square pattern to actually pop the buttons in. So you can put as many or as little buttons as you like, I've popped three along there. These ones are individual squares that I've crocheted and then the front is one big, one big square. These are joined together at the back here, these are just joined together with a wee bit of double crochet and round the edge it's joined with double crochet and then reverse double crochet to do the to do the edging. It's quite a nice wee edging, quite simple to do. Okay, um, one wee tip, see if you're doing this front cushion, sorry for leaning in, see if you're doing this at the front, this front panel here, what to do is when you start put a wee pin, put a wee hook, if you can see that, put a wee marker, sorry, put a wee marker in the front and then see when you come to do the second row, the cream one, start in the back and then the third row you would start in the front again fourth row you would flip it over so you're always working from the opposite side keep flipping it back and forth keep flipping it back and forward it helps your it helps your crochet piece to lie flat it doesn't really matter if you're making a cushion because you're going to be popping it over a cushion pad anyway but it helps if you're doing a blanket or something that you want to be lying out it doesn't have that wobbly wavy effect just if you keep flipping round and back to front okay just a wee tip for you if you're going to be making that um, this is another one that I did, same pattern, but using some different colours, using some different colours. This one I actually made to go with a quilt that I made because I do a lot of patchwork and quilting as well. Um, but I don't have the, I don't actually have the quilt anymore, I gave it away. So I think I'm going to pop this one into my Etsy shop, if anybody wants to buy it, I'll pop it in there okay, because it's needing to find a new, it's really needing to find a new home. Another thing I'm going to pop into my Etsy shop is some yarn. I found this yarn. I've had it stashed for a wee while. It's just Stylecraft Aran. I bought it to crochet some toys, but I'm just never going to get around to doing them. And even if I do, I don't know where I'm going to sit them. And I've got another, these four colourways as well. When I made my cushions, I used New Lanark Aran. This is a mill that's local to me, this company's quite local to me, nice place to go for a day out. That's why I use this yarn, because I like their yarn. This one as well is done in the, the new liner, Karen. These ones here are still craft, but there's 165, 160 metres in a ball of new liner. There's 196 in these, so if you wanted to try making a cushion, I'll pop these in. They won't be, I'll only put them on for a pound or two pound, or a pound or two, something like that. And you can pop on there and buy them. You can try doing a cushion if you like. They're look, look, another thing that's looking for a new home. While we're on the subject of crochet, I was wondering if anybody would like to take part in a little crochet along with me. You could download this pattern on Ravelry. It's a free pattern. You could use, you can make plain coloured granny squares or you can make some multicoloured ones. And it doesn't have to be this cushion you make. You could carry on, you could keep going with this one, make yourself a blanket. Or you could find something else to do with it, I don't know, maybe a, a blanket, you could do a cushion, hot water bottle cover, colder weather is coming in, isn't it? Or I'm going to be using this sham here, I've not even opened it, it's not out of the bag yet. It's um, some Sublime Egyptian cotton, it's a double knit and weight yarn. And I am actually, two seconds, I'm going to make myself a little top for summer next year. I'll show you a wee picture. This is the top that I'm going to make. It's made up of granny squares. There's another wee picture of it. This is a free pattern that I found online. It was one of the crochet magazines had put it on their Instagram page for Granny Square Day. So I'm going to I'm going to make this with the yarn that I've got, and I'll pop a wee link down below so you can see where the pa see the pattern in more detail. You can you can download it yourself if you want to. <clears throat> so I've got my yarn all ready to go to make my granny squares. They're in this little bag here. This is a pattern, this is a, this fabric, sorry, the fabric is by Anila Hoey, she's, she's my favourite fabric designer. And I've got my little, my little crochet along badge on here, all ready to go. So if anybody would like to take part, I've got enough of this fabric here. I've made two, another, another two panels, of a, a patchwork, and I'll make another bag. So if anybody wants to take part at the end, I'll have a wee random, 
I've got a wee random prize draw and somebody can win one of these wee bags. It's just a boxy bag that I made myself. But as I say, I've got enough. I can make a second one. Okay. Um, maybe should put a date on this, shouldn't I? Um, will we say from the 1st to maybe the 30th of September? And I'll pick a wee... A random winner at the end of September and you'll get one of these wee bags. Okay, not this. I think your one will have a paler hand though. But it'll be the same, it's this exact same fabric. It's Posey by Anila Hoey. I think that's all I've got to say crochet wise. So I'll get myself rearranged and we'll move on to patchwork and quilting. Each year from September to March, I usually run a patchwork and quilting class. I've got about 30 ladies that come along once a fortnight, just for a couple of hours. And we do some patchwork and quilting together. Unfortunately, due to COVID-19, we won't be able to start the classes again in September, which is a shame because I've missed everybody over the summer and we're not going to get to meet up. Well, we will, but it'll be in January, I think. Maybe we'll see how things go. Better for everybody to be safe rather than we meet up too soon. <clears throat> but I know one of the popular things just now, um, patchworking, patchworking wise, is English paper piecing. And I've been working on the smitten quilt. I've got it in my wee, my unicorn bag. I love, love this bag. So I'll just let you have a wee look inside just now, okay? I'll unzip it. Right, there we go. Looks like that. And you open it up. It's a little book. That's my pattern. I'll show you that in a wee second. And I've got all my, my templates and my, my rotary cutter for cutting all my bits in here. But it's a lovely, it's a lovely wee bag. It was a lovely project to make. I'll let you see. The, this is the pattern. I'll show you where you can get the pattern online if it's something you're interested in making yourself. It is called The Booklet Pouch and it's a pattern by Anila Hoy. She's one of my favourite, she's, she is my favourite fabric designer and she's also one of my favourite pattern designers as well. Can you see that? Okay. So that's called The Booklet Pouch and that's available on Anila's website. I think she's comfort stitching on Payhip, but I'll pop a wee link down below and you can have a wee look at her patterns online, okay? And the unicorn pattern, it was in this book here, Spellbinding Quilts. I, I was able to download, download this from the Martingale website. There's lots of lovely paper, the, it's foundation piece patterns in there. And I know most of you that do a patchwork and quilting will know what foundation piecing is, but just in case you don't, <coughs> <clears throat> this is um, you draw your pattern onto paper, you trace it onto paper, or you can print off a piece onto thin paper, and you start sewing. You use the lines as a guide, and you sew your little bits of fabric on. Great for doing things like New York Beauty, which is what this is, or unicorn. That unicorn, just lovely, isn't it? Right, then let's get back onto the paper piecing, the English paper piecing, not the foundation piecing. This is the pattern that I've been working on. I think I started it in November last year and I've got about 13 of the blocks done so far. So I'll show you some of my blocks that I finished just now. I'll do this really quickly because I've got, I think I've got 13 of them made. So here we go. And that one. I'll maybe not show you them all actually. One. I'll get this one. And then this one. These ones are some of my favourite ones. My little Red Riding Hood fabric. That one reminds me of being in holiday. Going to Amsterdam and we went to a wee island called Marken. Reminds me of my holiday, that one. Another favourite. Little Red. All these fabrics are by a fabric designer called Tasha Noel. All these are from her ranges. And I was been, I've been stockpiling these for quite a few years to do this quilt. There we go. Now, if English paper piecing is something that you're interested in doing, when I started doing this, I actually, excuse me, I bought templates and I bought the papers by Sue Daly. She's an Australian quilter. She's got some tutorials on YouTube and how to English paper piece. If you go watch those, she's got some really good tutorials. But you don't have to 
spend a fortune to do, to do your paper piecing. The very first project I made was this one here. Now again, this is another wee pattern by Anila Hoy. It was just some um, hexagons that I made. And I used these templates from Clover. Sorry, the, the lights are shining on that, reflecting on that. And these are great. They come in a wee pack. And you get different shapes and sizes in here. There's hexagons. You've also got the triangles. Couldn't remember the name there. And there's diamonds as well. And the idea behind this is you, you use the inside to mark your paper and you use the outside to mark your fabric and then it'll be able to wrap around. And if you watch some tutorials, it doesn't have to, you, you could, there's a lot of tutorials out there. So Sue so Daly's got some you can watch online, but um, they're really good. And this is a quite a cheap and cheerful way to do it. You don't have to go and buy pre-cut papers, pre-cut templates. You can make your own. And as I say, I made, that was the first wee thing I made with the hexagons that I had, that I had made. And it's actually a little storage pouch. So you can, oh, there's some templates in there already. You can keep your little templates in here. And you can keep your papers, you can keep the fabric that you've cut, you can keep it all in one place while you're working on your English paper piece and project. And look, it matches my bag. Another, you nail a hoy. Another way you can do it is you can buy, you can buy the, the templates. This is, this is a, I don't know well this will shop, this is an acrylic template and this is the papers that come with it. These ones are the one and a half inch jewel templates and the, the papers that match. So we, the papers are a wee bit smaller, so you use this to cut your fabric and then you wrap it round here. And when I do mines, when I base mine, I stitch right through, I don't know if you can see that very well, I do stitch right through my fabric and my papers. I tend to have a lot of projects and they go at one time, things lie about for quite some time. So I don't have to worry about the glue unsticking, my fabric falling off my paper, can leave it lying as long as I like. And then when I come to putting them together, I'm going to put those together like that. So it makes a wee love heart. And I've been using up all my little Liberty, little bits of Liberty leftover fabric. I went to Liberty when I was in honeymoon and I bought some of these fabrics. So they're going to go together and make... I don't actually know what I'm going to make with it yet, but I'll make something. Probably turn it into an, an Anila Hoey bag. But there we go. They'll make lots of lovely little love hearts. What I was thinking about doing was running some quilt alongs as well as doing some crochet alongs. I've got some more crochet patterns that I can release as a crochet along as well. I've got hoping to do some sock knit alongs, but I would also like to do some patchwork and quilting. Some patchwork and quilt alongs, I suppose you would call them. And I'm wondering whether the first thing to do is real fence quilt. A real fence, because if you're new to this, this is really easy to put together. So you can let me know what you think about that. Would you like to, would you, is it something you'd be interested in taking part in? And I can do some tutorials for this as well. This is just a little cushion cover. And um, this is another thing that I'm probably going to pop in my Etsy shop because I, I made it for a class. I made it for teaching a class and it's never been used since then. But I'll get that probably in my Etsy shop as well over the weekend, maybe Monday. But if it's something that you're interested in, let me know and I can start organising some quilting tutorials as well, even if it's just one a month. You can make it as a cushion or um, there'll be a bigger version. You can make yourself a lap quilt. OK. And I think that's all I've got to talk about today. I don't know how long that's been, maybe about 30 minutes. But anyway, thank you for watching and I'll come back. I'll be back in a couple of weeks time and I'll give you an update on the socks and when I'll be releasing my sock patterns. Thank you. Bye.